Welcome back to the audio workshop. Okay. 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 Okay, you guys have expressed that you would like to see how to construct playlists and possibly shuffle things. So we're going to resume with the same exact code that we left off with in video number four. And we're going to add the code that we applied in video number five, just so that no matter what browser the user is listening with, they get the correct kind of file, mp3 or .org. So we'll add that code and we'll just keep it in place. I know I said I wouldn't add it to all the lessons, but we'll just add it once and keep it in place. So this is the same exact code that we left off with in video number four. And I'm going to take all the variables and we're going to be creating a playlist player now. So I'm going to take all the variables that we initialized outside of the init audio player function and I just put them inside. And they should all still work exactly the same that way. I just wanted to neaten things up and make sure everything was inside the init audio player function. See there's the audio track playing. And remember the code for all of the videos is underneath the videos at my site. So every time we release a video, there's also corresponding code directly underneath it. Now we're going to put the code that we applied in video number five. That's to serve up .org file audio type files to people using Firefox and Opera, which was all discussed in video number five. So now we have a variable of extension, agent, and we check the agent to see if it's Firefox or Opera. If it is, we change the extension to .org everybody else gets mp3 then like we did we'll go down here and remove the extension and just put plus ext to add the extension to the file name now what we're gonna do is go down to where it says audio dot loop and we're gonna change that to false because we are going to be switching tracks every time the audio is ended now right above the extension variable I'm gonna add another variable for a directory and that stands for the audio directory, whatever folder all of your audio files are in. So we can just copy that. And down here where it says audio source, we can remove the directory. See how we're putting audio forward slash? We can remove audio forward slash. And then just put dir plus. And then just test again to make sure it's all working. It's working just fine. Now directly under the directory folder, I'm going to add another variable called playlist. And this is going to be an array. So we put the square brackets and then in between quotes we're going to add our array elements which in this case are going to be songs from a playlist. So you see here the string stoker that's the name of the song that I've been playing the whole time. I'm going to take that control C I'm going to make that the first element in the array. Now I also have some other songs in my audio folder and I'm gonna make them part of this playlist. One is named Skullfire, and the other one that I wanna make part of my playlist is Scurvy Pirate. So in my audio folder, I have Skullfire.mp3, ScurvyPirate.mp3, Skullfire.org, ScurvyPirate.org, and Stoker.org, and all MP3 and AUG versions of those songs. Now those are part of your playlist, and you can put any amount of elements you want within this array separated by comma. Now since we're adding the string stoker here, we're going to make it dynamic now by saying playlist bracket zero. We're going to target the first element in this array and just make that the default song that's going to play first. So we put playlist and then in between square brackets we're going to put the zero to target the first element in this array. So now test again to make sure everything's working fine for me now underneath the playlist variable let's add one more variable called playlist index and this just lets us keep track of the index position of what song is playing within the playlist and by default it's going to be set to zero because we're playing the first song in the playlist by default now the way we change tracks is that this playlist index variable will get incremented so basically this playlist index variable can be changed to anything and then the switch track function that we're about to write in a second will change tracks according to whatever playlist number whatever track number in the playlist that this playlist index variable refers to now before we put in our switch track function we're gonna have to set object references and event handling for when the track ends 
So for the object references, we're going to just add something to put a HTML message on the page about what track is being played currently by the audio player. And actually, instead of making that a var here, let's just take that and make it a var where we're making all the rest of our bars up top. And you can do that with all of these, and actually we should. Let's take this directory and make that part of the var list. Playlist, control C, you can put that there, comma, playlist, extension, control C, comma, extension, agent, you take that one as well, comma, agent, and that looks like all of them. So now we can remove these var identifiers there in front of them. There we go. Now we're targeting a playlist status element on the page, so we need that element down on the page. And I'll just make that in my HTML underneath my audio player div. I'm going to put an H2 element. Make it nice and big. And you can display this in any element that you want. Let's just give it an ID equal to playlist status. And now our program will write things into that HTML element. And I might set the object references above where we start our audio object. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Because I'm going to have a line. I'm going to take these object references. Control X. Put them up here. Control V. Because right after I tell my audio to play, I want to write this into that element we just put on the page, the playlist status element. So we target the playlist status element and we say dot inner HTML is equal to track playlist index plus one and then a hyphen and then we put the actual name of the, the song playing. And you can also add the extension too here if you want like this, ext. So now let's straighten this up a little bit. And here we can just put ourselves a note saying audio object. There we go. That looks better. Now let's test to make sure that it's writing that. So you see we have track one stoker.mp3. Now all we have to do is add an event listener for the ended event. Let's go here right under the time update event and let's put in audio.add event listener ended. We target the ended event. That means whenever the track ends, when an audio file finishes. Then we run a custom function here and in that custom function we're telling a switch track function to execute. Just like we're doing for most of our other events. So all we need now is a switch track function. So every time the audio playing in the audio object comes to an end then we can run the switch track function which will switch to track by changing this variable playlist index. Okay, so where should we put that? Let's just put it right at the top. So here's the new function that I just added and I'll explain every single line of code within it. And just keep in mind that this function is told to execute on the ended event for the audio object when the song comes to an end. So what we're doing inside of the switch track function is we're assigning the playlist index number new value according to what the value of it is. Now this first if condition is just checking to see if it's at the last song in the list. And you see our list is scurvy pirate is the last song in our list. So if the current playing track is equal to the playlist dot length minus one, then we make the playlist index go back to zero. Basically, you start back over from the beginning. So when the song Scurvy Pirate ends, Stoker will begin again. That's what that little if condition does at first. Else, if that's not the case, if it's not the last song in the playlist, then you're going to just make the playlist index increment by one. So for instance, if you're playing Stoker and then it gets to the end of Stoker, you want Skullfire to begin. When it gets to the end of Skullfire, you want Scurvy Pirate to begin. That's why we're incrementing by one this playlist index number. Then just like we did before to show in the H inner HTML of our playlist status, we're going to show the current track that's playing, what number it is in the playlist, and the name of it. So this shows the name, and this shows what number it is in the playlist. 
Then after that you reassign the audio objects source file, the audio that it's supposed to be playing. And you make that equal to your directory plus your playlist plus actually we have to put the extension on there just like we did up here. So let's copy that and pop it on right there. So now we have our extension, we have our directory, the file that's supposed to play, and the extension all ready to go. And then we just say audio.play and that makes the new song play, the next song in the playlist play. Actually since my page is so dark I'm gonna go down here and give this thing some style. Just make the color of the text white. White text. And now we test our newly programmed playlist. So I'm gonna just drag it to the end of this song. And when it gets to the end of this song, hopefully it changes to skullfire.mp3, which is the next song in the track, in the playlist. There we go. So we got track two, Skullfire. And you can see in my rendering, I need to put the extension. Where was that? Right here. We need to add extension right there. Now test that. Gets to the end of the first song. There we go. Now when that one finishes playing through, the last song should play. Now Scurvy Pirate. And that's the last song in my particular playlist. Now, when this one gets to the end, It goes back to the first track. So you see you have a successful working playlist that starts at the first song, goes all the way through the whole playlist, and then goes back to the first song. And you can see we're using a simple array. Now the more you know about array programming in JavaScript, the better off you're going to be with doing a whole lot of different things regarding your playlist. Shuffling it. Uh, for instance, I did a tutorial. You can search YouTube for Fisher Yates shuffle algorithm and I applied the Fisher Yates shuffle algorithm to JavaScript because JavaScript doesn't come equipped with a built-in shuffle method for arrays you have to actually write it so I in that tutorial I showed how to make a, uh, a Fisher Yates style shuffle method that we used prototype to attach to all array elements in our program Actually, I might even just add it to the next video. We'll show a video of how to shuffle the array and do different things like uh, you might want forward and back buttons. Like you can have little arrows just going forward and back. That way people can click to go through all the different songs in a playlist. You can create a shuffle button that when pressed will shuffle the whole playlist and any other things that are possible with arrays. And some of you might be asking, well, how do I have a drop down? You can make an HTML select drop down list with all of the uh, songs in your playlist in the drop down list, and the user can click any song they want by the title. And just like you guys requested to see how to build a playlist, you can request more and detail more things that you might like to see. Because there's definitely more that we need to demonstrate about playlists, especially shuffling it. So I'll probably take my Fisher Yates shuffle algorithm method that we wrote and apply it to this audio programming in one of the next upcoming videos for the audio workshop. And there's ways to externalize this playlist array. You can actually have a .json file that is like a playlist database. You can have an XML file that's a playlist database and you just call those files in and then once those files are parsed in JavaScript, you have an array of objects. So there's really a lot you can do with Dynamics. So if you were creating a, an audio program for a client, the audio program itself can be dynamically fed its whole playlist from an external file. You can also do things with PHP that make it even more magical because PHP, all you have to do is point PHP to any folder and it can dig inside that folder capture all of the files within it, give you all the name of the files within it back as an array. So that's pretty cool. 
you can just take PHP make it snoop into any file folder maybe the file folder has a hundred different audio files in it PHP can just scoop all of those up magically and make an array out of it dynamically that you can feed to a play uh, playlist player like this now I also I wrote an article that's at uh, web intersect I wrote an article about how to transform PHP arrays dynamic PHP arrays into JavaScript arrays in the same application so if you're looking to get your PHP array fed into your JavaScript program it's no problem you can easily do that so there's really miles you can go with all of this playlist and there's different directions you can go in with this playlist uh, audio programming.